Ah, right, Joe. So it's hot as shit over here on the East Coast, but you know, yo, I swear to God, bro, I can't afford electricity, so I can't put the AC on. You heard? So I'm gonna use this shit right here. It might aggravate some of y'all, but hey, right, man, shit do the trick. You need some? No, I'm good. You look a little parched. All right. That being said, what we got next, Bree? Ali Sadiq Mitchell. Ali Sadiq Mitchell. Highly requested. Highly requested. <laughs> Highly requested. Yeah. Ah, right, let's get it. All right, I gotta put this now somewhere, bro. It's kind of hot down there. That's where I feel the most heat coming from. You ready? If you're new to the channel, feel free to comment, subscribe, thumbs up, slap that red button. Yo, we need at least two thousand likes on this. You heard? Two thousand. Yeah. Because when I ask for a thousand, y'all don't give us a thousand. So let me ask for two thousand. Maybe y'all might give me a thousand. Let's get it. Let's go. Alisa Deep though, man, is highly requested. What's going on here? Mexican guy. What happens when you take a 19-year-old boy and put him in prison? That's what happens. Now, I'm 21 at the time because I done settled into the prison now. I've been there for a while. But in prison, you have things that you're very particular about. Like right. I told my celly, hey, no peeing standing up in this in this cell. You have to sit down and pee because of this. <laughs> I pray on the floor. And so if you urinate and you splash urine all over the place, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Just setting the tone. So, I get you. You start to develop certain type of phobias about things. Um, I developed this phobia when I first got to this place called diagnostics in prison. It's, a, it's basically slavery. It's like a bunch of fences. You're in one fence. It's, like it's, it's a space for like 80 people, but they ram like 200 people in the space, and you're just trying to get your space. You don't want nobody behind you. You don't want nobody but in front of you. You just want to maintain your space. Gotcha. So that's the first chair on the first little cage and you have on clothes. Nah, bro. I, I ain't even gonna lie, bro. And I'm gonna cut them off real quick, bro. The first thing that's the hardest thing to get around is washing your clothes inside the toilet. That's the hardest thing. I couldn't imagine. I you couldn't got, imagine. We wash our clothes inside the toilet. Now, that's only if we got like a visit coming up, you know what I'm saying? And laundry couldn't get back. Cause you you gotta understand you gotta you 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 gotta tip the porters. If you ain't tipping the porters and you ain't got none in your commissary, you kind of broke, so you ain't getting none. So you gotta wash in the toilet. Damn. Which is weird, bro, because it's you and his uh, yo. If he a stanky ass monk, then obviously there's a problem there. You know what I'm saying? So I to get I, I get the stipulations, but that's the first thing you have to be able to like. Damn, can I deal with this shit? Mm -hmm. Can I really deal with this shit? And you end up dealing with that shit. And sometimes you smell like shit. Damn. For real. I ain't even lying. Let's go. You don't want nobody but in front of you. You just want to maintain your space. So that's the first chair on the first little cage and you have on clothes. So they move you to the second cage and they tell you to take off all your clothes. Now you naked with the same bunch of people smashed in so now you back trying to get your space yeah. you don't want nobody behind you don't want nobody in front Hell of you no. trying to get your space dude we all naked so dude come over and talk to me say hey man what's going on what you in here for hey dude get the fuck away from me i'm naked and you in my space <laughs> so i'm not really comfortable being naked with a, a plethora of men i'm not that's not why i'm at with my life Yo, it's funny that he says that, bro. Cause now I know, yo, like I was like, yo, bro, where you get your braids? And I flipped his braid, right? He's like, yo, what the fuck you doing? Fuck are you doing? I ain't some fucking toy for you to play with. I'm like, whoa, trauma. Bro, chill. I'm just saying where you get your braids at. And I flipped it because I didn't want to touch you. Like, make it weird. Yeah. But I guess I made it weird because I flipped it. As soon as I flipped it, do went off. He went crazy, cause I'm like, bro, how you get your brains done? Mm -hmm. I don't see no females in here. You heard? He's like, yo. And then he bugged out. So I never ended up finding out where to get the braids from. Mm -hmm. 
I had to do my own, which I look like shit in court because the shit went sideways. Oh, it was nice. cockeyed and shit. That, yo, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I got that hair that sometimes get that prickly shit. So I went to court looking all sideways and shit because dude didn't want to tell me where he got his braids from. <laughs> he walked in there all tight ass and shit. And I'm like, bro, I ain't even trying to touch your ass. All I'm trying to do is where you get your braids from. <laughs> like, come <That's> on. <laughs> so I'm not really comfortable being naked with a, a plethora of men. I'm not, that's not why I'm at with my life. So, moving forward, now I'm in prison, and I remember something my uncle told me. He said, if you never want to be naked in prison, you buy some shorts off commissary, and they can't make you take off the shorts because the shorts are not contraband. Cool. I've been having these shorts. This was my first purchase. Yeah. A lot of people purchase other things on commissary, soup and food. I bought a yes. pair of white shorts, yes. $7. Yes. Best I purchase I ever made in prison. <laughs> so... I wear these shorts every day. Even if I wear my boxers, I wear the shorts on under my boxers. Because I already know anytime you can be strip searched. And I know the rules because I was the fine safety clerk. See, let me tell you, fine safety clerk. Yo, nah, how, yo, how you I know so early, everything yo. about this prison because I work for Scarborough, which is a fine safety man. I'm the fine safety clerk. So I don't want nobody fucking with me, <laughs> stripping down nothing. Yeah, I ain't even gonna lie. He must have been a good dude in prison because to get that job, bro, ain't easy, bro. You have to work your way up to that. So you must have been a supreme, perfect prisoner, bro. You wasn't getting in no trouble. I get it. Oh, bro, which is a fine safety man. I'm the fine safety clerk. So I don't want nobody fucking with me. <laughs> stripping down nothing. So most of the time, I'm a, I'm a well-respected young guy in this prison. Because I've been here since I was 19. Now I'm 21. And I'm, I'm just gaining my stripes. Officers yeah, respect me because yeah. I'm respectable. And I'm so respectable that officers don't do this. When they call, this is thing they call child time. That's what people child. run out the, uh, the, the door to go eat like fucking cattle. I said, yeah. hey, don't talk to me like that. I'm a civilized human being. And the officers were like, oh, child time. Then they turn around, Ali, excuse F1 Ma, get ready for child. How many times did I tell you, bro, I felt like a dog? Not even oh, cattle. No. I've told you this, the chow word, that word chow, F1 Ma, get ready for chow. That chow, it just, bro, it just sits wrong. I, I think they purposely do it to make you feel like an animal. <laughs> on the door to go eat like fucking cattle. I said, hey, um, don't talk to me like that. I'm a civilized human being. And the officer was like, oh, chow time. Then they turn around, Ali, excuse me, lunch for you. I'm like, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Cause I'm very civilized. <laughs> so now I'm I'm about to become uncivilized because it's an officer named Mitch. It's always person. somebody when a bunch of people like you. It's always somebody who doesn't like you and they trying to prove a point. So yeah. Mitchell sees me and let me tell you who Mitchell look like. Mitchell look like the dude. What's the dude? Flanders on The Simpsons. Oh my He's God. always like a fucking pedophile to me. Always. <laughs> So I'm coming through for no Simpsons, bro. <laughs> Come on now. Let's go. Random reason. Mitchell pulls me over in this area. I'm on building eight, this is why I stay at. And, and it's a it's a, tra a high traffic area, the vestibule area. He stops me in the fucking vestibule area and say, Hey, I think you have some contraband. I'ma shake you down. I'm like, yo, Mitchell, I just came from necessities. I don't have no fucking contraband. Get the fuck out of here. You know, and put your hands down while you're talking to me because you're supposed to stay three feet away from me because you know I'm the fucking fine safety clerk. So don't fucking break the rules. <laughs> so he say, well, I'm going to strip search you. I'm like, no, you're not. Not in this high traffic area. No, you're not, sir. So he calls the rest of these other officers around, some fucking rookies that don't know me, and he's like, yo, you're going to have to take off your clothes. Nah, so I took off all of they white that. shit. They, they clothes. Can't do that. Gave it to him nothing. I got my shorts on. I'm standing there. Yeah. He said, you're going to have to take them shorts off. Mm -hmm. I say, that's not the rules, Mitchell. Which not the rules. Though. That is fact, though, bro. Especially around food, anything like that. High safety clerk, he can't. That He's a safety clerk, bro. And then you're going to put him out there like that? That's not even right. Like, at the end of the day, you better find something. You better find something because you're going to look dead stupid 
You're going to look that stupid. You don't play like that. When there's people doing the right thing and they doing what they're doing, if he a high safety clerk, bro, there's no way you're that without being a model prisoner, mm-hmm. without gaining the trust of the guards. Because believe me, at the end of the day, it stops at what? The warden. Yeah. But the guards are the ones that's going to say, okay, we're going we're gonna to promote you. Oh, okay. It ain't prisoners. Mm-hmm. Prisoners ain't promoting you. Come on. Yeah. Unless, especially in a place where there's what? Poultry. There's vegetables. They're not going to, sh- no, they're going to take you to one of the rooms. Yeah. They're going to take you to a confined room and they're going to search you. But for them to do that to him, no, and they will do that. He's. I, I'm not saying he's lying. I'm telling you that right now. They will do that just to what? To prove their dominance. Ridicule you and dominate you. And these are like some corny ass cornball guards, bro. Mm-hmm. Most of these guards are corny ass cornball guards. Oh, You're I heard? heard some stories. Corny ass cornball guards that don't know shit about shit. But yet they know for the fact that they got you, a person that if it was in the street, you would slap the living out of them, bro. Mm-hmm. You slap them right out of these socks, bro. Mm-hmm. You slap them out their hat, son. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they're going to do what they're going to do because they know you can't do shit, especially if you're trying to get out. They know you're trying to get out. They know you got a family. They see your mail. They see the, I love you, baby. I love you so much. Can't wait to get home. And we make love and we do all of this extra. Da, da, da. We walk the dogs and we do this, that, and the third. When you're in prison, when you feel vulnerable. So what they do, they do. What do they do? They then turn that around and they're like, oh, this motherfucker so I can fuck with this dude. Whether he not or not, I'm still going to make him look stupid. Yep. But they already know the ones that get you touched outside are the ones you're going to play with inside. Because there's motherfuckers that'll get you touched outside, bro. They'll come visit your family and be like, yo, stop fucking. Y'all already know that. Come on. It's high traffic area. No, you're not, sir. So he calls the rest of these other officers around, some fucking rookies that don't know me. And he's like, yo, we're going to have to take off your clothes. So I took off. All of they white shit, they clothes. Gave it to him, nothing. I got my shorts on, I'm standing there. He said, you want to take them shorts off? No. I say, that's not the rules, Mitchell. Not the rules. <laughs> oh, no, and I now I'm, I'm getting a little, a little heated about this yes. because I know I'm I have a man. problem with being naked in the nah. fucking hallway. <laughs> and I know that I have a problem with this. And I'm, and I'm trying to get Mitchell to understand, Mitchell, this is not going to be good. <laughs> Mitchell, Mitchell, Mitchell. I'm trying to explain to Mitchell. Mitchell. So he gets all the rest of these officers around. The captain comes up and says, I can't go against my officer. He say you got contraband. You're going to have to get naked. I say, Captain, if I get naked in this hallway in front of all these people coming in and out, and I turned right to Mitchell and looked at him in his eyes and say, this ain't going to be good, Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't give a shit about going home at this point. Yep. See what I, I just came said. here with Yo, 15 years, said. Mitchell. I want to do these little 15 years and go home. But if you make me get naked in this motherfucking vestibule area. <laughs> <laughs> so they got all these officers around me. And I didn't threaten this man with the easiest way I can threaten him without getting sent to save. I said, Mitchell, this ain't gonna be good, Hell brother. Nah. So, long story short, I end up naked. Bro, how the fuck did you end up naked in the child hall, though? They violated, yo, where he from? Put it in the comments, where he from? Cause they violated him. I came here with 15 years, Mitchell. I wanna do these little 15 years and go home. But if you make me get naked, in this motherfucking vestibule area. <laughs> so they got all these officers around me, and I didn't threaten this man with the easiest way I can threaten him without getting sent to save. I said, Mitchell, this ain't gonna be good, brother. So long story short, I end up naked. <laughs> and I'm pissed. I'm naked and I'm bald headed, and he, do- he taking me through this bullshit. Run your fingers through your hair. <laughs> Open your mouth. I've been talking this whole time. If something was in my mouth, Mitchell, it'd have been fell out. Open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Lift up your balls. 
squat. Let me explain what, what he just did. I went to prison for a nonviolent case, drug dealing. What he just turned me into was a violent young man at 21. Because you made me cough and squat for no fucking reason other than that you wanted to see me in my mind. So now, I'm, I got tears in my eyes and people walking past, other prisoners walking past, and they looking at Mitchell like, Mitchell. <laughs> nah, yo, I'm gonna be honest with you, this isn't comedy, this is like real shit. I, yo, I feel everything he's saying in my stomach, bro. I know what that feel like. Why you think I couldn't fuck with Rick Ross after I found out he was a CO, bro? <laughs> you find it. This ain't Finally. gonna be good. <laughs> so for eight months, I've been planning on killing Mitchell. <laughs> like I done wrote my mama this coded, this coded letter, <laughs> letting her know that her son ain't coming home no more. <laughs> I told, this is what I wrote the letter. I say, Mama, you prison is like judicial slavery. I just figured this out. And I'm Nat Turner. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. You had to know about history to know. Y'all y'all figured out. <laughs> and my mom writes me a letter back like, just chill. And she got a face with tears on the face. And I'm like looking, I ain't even like, I don't give a fuck about my mama tears. What I care about is this. I was in the fucking festival area with my balls lifted up, squatting, fucking coughing, letting this fucking child predator look at me. This is what I'm fucking focused on. I'm and killing knows, Mitchell. I right. already put it in my mind. It's done. He, he's, he's done. He's done. So I done told two people. I told two people. Alameen, his name is Leslie Davis, and Mustafa. I don't know Mustafa's <laughs> name because I was so terrified of Mustafa. I never wanted to ask him. Yeah, we already know they're Muslims. Don't play with the Muslims, bro. Don't play with the Muslims in jail. I'm telling you right now, Mustafa don't play, bro. His name is Leslie Davis and Mustafa. I don't know Mustafa's name because I was so terrified of Mustafa. I never wanted to ask him <laughs> his real yeah, name because then what happened? Somebody busting for something else in prison I'm sitting there, I know his real name, then it's back on me. Didn't want to yeah, 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 So I told Mustafa, Mustafa's like, yeah, that was foul what Mitchell did. Mustafa yeah. been here for 27 years. If I kill somebody, I know he down. <laughs> <laughs> Alameen got 50 years. He ain't going nowhere. I plan on spending the rest of my life with Alameen and Mustafa. <laughs> Cause hey, I'm gonna kill right. Mitchell, I already know this. <laughs> Don't know how. Nah. But like anything in my life, something is gonna break. This dude, I'm coming from eating. This dude say, hey Lee. I said, what's up, man? He said, you know Mitchell is working the foregate. I said, what? <laughs> now, now mind you, I've been in prison. I haven't been happy about nothing in a long time. <laughs> the man told me that he was working foregate. I got fucking excited. Let me tell you what four gate is. Four gate is the gate to close custody. I live on eight building. You got to go to four building if you go into close custody. When you come around the corner in four building, it's like you got to come past the cafeteria and then it's the main building this way and then it's this little side hallway and you can't see anybody until you come around that corner. And Mitchell's at a gate around that corner, which is a good, a, they, he's not gonna make it if I get to him. He's not gonna make it. <laughs> And then it's that gate, and then it's the gate to four building. So it's a long way to get to him, then it's another long way to get to that door. I got a plan. I'm going to just run and just fucking just try to get through that gate and just stab Mitchell. Like, that's stupid. That's stupid. So I go back to my cell, and I'm sitting up trying to map out a plan on how I can fucking kill this dude. And Yo, then I hear, get ready to go to four building. I look out myself, though. It's a dude that got in trouble. Now he's getting sent to four building. He has this big white bucket with all this shit in it. And I say, hey, you going to four building? He say, yeah. I say, let me carry your mattress for you. He say, mm -hmm. cool, I need some help. I go up the stairs, get uh, my- Hold up, hold up. You got to walk that shit out, but you ain't, you ain't taking no mattress, bro. 
You ain't getting no double mattress. You ain't getting no cushy mattress. I'm telling you right now. You lucky if you get a fucking mattress. Fuck is you talk about, bro? All you get is a bunch of sheets and a metal mm. slab. That's what I know from New York, nigga. We, <laughs> shit, I ain't had no mattress. Yeah. We ain't had no mattress. And maybe it was a mattress. I just, man, I might have thought it was a fucking blanket because the shit was so thin. Yeah. Because the shit was not no mattress. I'm just telling you that right now. You go in the full building? He said, yeah. I say, let me carry your mattress for you. He said, cool, I need some help. I go up the stairs, get my knife, put my strap, my shit on me. Boom, I got a big ass mattress over my shoulder. <laughs> so you can't see my face. He's rolling the bucket, mattress over me, come around the building, and I'm so fucking excited because I'm going to kill Mitchell and I'm going to drink a sip of his blood because I fucking hated that man. <laughs> When they find me, I'm be like, yeah, Mitchell on my, I'm, 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 I'm can't fucking wait. Oh, I'm so violent, I can't wait. So, got this knife, and I'm got this mattress, and this dude, and me and this dude, he has no idea what's gonna happen. He's, he, he's accessory to this crime, and he is so unaware. He just rolled his, he rolled his bucket, talking about his family, man, I'm just fucked up. My family ain't gonna get to visit me. I'm like, good, mine ain't either. So, we coming around the bill. We coming past the fucking child hall, and I'm just getting more and more excited because this is going to be a good one. <laughs> Somebody apparently tell, because Alameen looking for me, apparently. He said, yo, where Ali at? He said, Ali helped old boy move to four building. And Mustafa, because I get this all the backstory. Mustafa mm -hmm. say, yeah, he going to four building. And Leslie, Alameen say, hey man, I think Mitchell on four building. Mustafa say, Mitchell on four building? Mm -hmm. man, oh, wait a minute, hold Mustafa say, Mitchell on four building? Man, let's go get this boy, because he going to kill Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> now, hey, it's complicated, because they got to get out of eight building first. You got to get out of eight building. You got to exactly. get buzzed out your part, come out of eight building. Exactly. I'm thinking I'm good. I got enough time to commit this murder and hopefully get away with it <laughs> after really. I sip his blood. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You know what I'm saying? Boom. So we coming around the corner. <laughs> the dude has the bucket. He's going through. Mitchell opens the gate. No. Nice. Yes. <laughs> but he don't see me. He can't see me because I have the mattress over my shoulder. Yeah. And as the bucket goes through the gate, it's, the path is clear. All I got to do is wait for that bucket to get out the way. Then Mitchell will be standing at the edge of that gate. I can walk through my mattress and just fucking start stabbing Mitchell. <laughs> 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 just a I got it playing out of my head. I'm yeah, dead serious. I get it. So I, I come, it. I'm right there. And as soon as I fucking get to where I can see Mitchell, Alameen and Mustafa come around the fucking hallway and say, Ali! Oh. And I turn and look, and Mitchell no. sees me and slams the gate and tells me to put the mattress down. He can take his own mattress. Put the mattress down! And I'm standing there looking at him. <laughs> say, hey, Mitchell. <laughs> and he just said, put the mattress down. I slid the mattress off my shoulder. I say, you have a good day, Mitchell. And just the fucking terror in his eyes. Uh, and I know he shit on himself just a little bit. Yeah. Oh, oh, Was enough okay. for me. And I just walked away real slow. Oh, with, and didn't break man. eye contact until I got to Alameen. <laughs> So, all right, a lot of the stuff he was doing, he was inserting it for comic relief and all of that. But in his eyes, oh, I know, and when I he see tells a certain story, time. when he tells a certain story is the way I feel. Mm -hmm. And I know what he feels gritty in his gut. These ain't no fake stories. Nah. The ones he's telling right now, they are not no fake stories mm -hmm. because that's how you feel, bro. If you've ever been inside, you already know, bro. Yo, I'm being dead serious, bro. Like, there's so many of them you want to get, bro. Uh, the nurses, the nurses that the nurses that prick you when you first come in and they take blood, can't stand you. 
yo, I'm telling you, everybody, if you want methadone, if you want whatever, if you got to get meds, those nurses are the most gulliest, most angriest, most vicious people in the world, bro. They treat you like shit, just like the guys do. But if you're in there for life, all of that, them treating you like, ends up becoming something else. Mm -hmm. But my point is this, is the fact that he, the way he's telling the story and expressing himself is exactly the way every prisoner feels and the way we speak with each other at night, bro. When we're sitting there talking and you can hear through the vent and we're like, yeah, man, Mitchell's an asshole. Fuck that dude. Bro, you see what he did with Rashad? Ali. Yo, you see what he did to Ali, bro? Yo, he violated him, bro, in the child hall, son. He was over there making sure everything was good, bro. They violated him, bro. bro for them to make him squat in a child hall, bro, especially behind the line, and maybe, uh, I don't know, but these ones are hitting, these ones are hitting in a different way. But hey, man, hey, man. Hey. What do you want me to do, bro? What do you want me to do? I'm going to tell the truth, bro. They funny. They funny because it's what we all feel. But I ain't going to lie, this shit hit hard. This he made it out. He made it out. Now look at him. Look Now look at him. Yeah, making more what than what all of them assholes yeah, doing. Yeah, man. They over there making like 20 bucks an hour. He over here killing it. Talking about them. <laughs> That being said, if you're new to the channel, forget to come, subscribe, thumbs up, slap that red button, please.